Hey guys, Easy Tech Review here with a quick video of the HP Envy 14 playing some games, some gameplay videos for you guys to take a look at. But first, real quick, just wanted to make a quick comment about the glossiness of the HP Radiance display, 1600 by 900. Now, when the Apple MacBook unibody models came out in 2008, a lot of people complained about how glossy they were at the screens. So I have one here, the 2010 MacBook Pro 13 inch and the HP Envy 14. And just to show you real quick, you can see my fingers and the reflection. The, the HP Envy is pretty much just as glossy. So for those who don't like very glossy screens or plan to use it outside a lot, this might be a con for you guys to consider. Okay, also uh, by popular request, a couple of you guys asked for a viewing angle comparison between the two. So I'm just going to go through that real quick. First, the HP MV14. Okay. This is about straight on for you guys. And then first I'm going to start with the top and bottom viewing angles. So I'm going to put that on. Okay, this is the extremity from the top viewing angle. And I'll go the other direction. It's pretty much the maximum it goes. Alright, now bring it back to straight. Straight, and then starting from the left side. Okay, this is the left extremity. And then now go in the other direction. Okay, this is the right side extremity. So this is the HP Envy 14 viewing angles of the Radiance display, 1600 by 900. This is the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Alright, this is straight on for you guys pretty much. Now let's start going down. Okay, this is the top down view. Go the other direction. Alright, this is as far as it goes. Okay. Now back to back to the normal position. Now go to the left side. Okay, this is the left side extremity. Now go the other direction. Same picture on both the uh, laptops, by the way. Also, max brightness on both laptops, so hopefully that helps you out. So there you go, the viewing angle extremities of the HP NV14 and the Apple MacBook Pro 13-inch. Okay. Also, a quick comment on the backlit keyboard of the HP Envy. Unfortunately, unlike the MacBook Pro and the Dell Latitude E series, like the E4310 E6410 models, the backlighting does not have an ambient light sensor built in, so it doesn't adjust, turn itself off and on based on uh, based on the light around you. It just a manual toggle on and off for the keyboard backlighting so not too big too much big of a deal but just thought I'd mention that real quick GPU Z to show you guys I was talking about bef in the previous video the GPU clock is only at 450 megahertz versus 550 megahertz memory is still at 800 so that's okay but pretty disappointing about the 450 megahertz all right, now onto the games. I'm gonna turn off the light for this so you guys can see more clear. Okay, 
Okay, first let's start with Battlefield Bad Company 2. Now keep in mind that I only have a 320 gigabyte 7200 RPM uh, hard drive, so loading games is a little slower than say if I was to have an SSD. Okay, just real quick, settings, 1600 by 900 native rest. The advanced settings details are a mixture of medium and high settings, 2x, AA. Um, this game is pretty heavy for specs wise, so I'm going to play that medium and high combination mixture. Okay, firing up the server browser. Super random game. I think it might be an older Catalyst version that I have because loading Battlefield always takes very long. I don't know if I mentioned in my previous video, but this is a stock HP install. Uh, I didn't do a fresh install, just remove some bloatware. So you can keep that in mind for video game performance. If you clean install, it might give you a little more performance. So, I think it's a little glitch in my drivers or something, because whenever I start a game, it freezes up for a little bit. But once that's over, you'll see, with these settings, medium and high, it's, it's pretty smooth. Uh, everything runs pretty smooth. Uh, no complaints really for Battlefield Bad Company 2. Some grass. Run into some smoke. You'll see, even with smoke, it's still relatively smooth. So, yeah, that's it for Bad Company 2. With the settings you saw before still runs quite smooth okay next game I'll be running Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 uh, I'm just gonna mute this game because sometimes there's some rowdy individuals on the servers actually took this video a few times and had to not post them up because of this. Uh, resolution 1600 by 900 native res. All the specular maps and whatnot on. Uh, and the advanced settings, texture quality, everything's on extra, which is the highest setting. So everything's pretty much maxed out in this game. 1600 by 900. You can hear the fan kicking on, kicking in during gaming. For these FPS gamers, it's, it's uh the fan kicks up and then goes back down regularly. But oddly enough, for StarCraft Two, it seems like it's always on, which uh, I'll show you in the next game after this.
Okay. Everything's max settings again. 1600 by 900 native res. Runs really smoothly. No problems. I'm sorry, I wish I could show you a little more, but I'm running out of time in this video. Okay, last but not least, of course, is StarCraft 2. Settings. Native rest, 1600, 900. Everything's on high uh, with some mediums. I found this is the best settings to uh, make sure the game's playable during massive firefights and whatnot. So you see everything looks great at high settings, 1600 by 900. Gameplay is smooth throughout a match, uh, only during some custom games like, you know, Tower Defense where it can get like 400 units on the screen. It does slow down a little bit and I actually get that message where it tells you you're slowing down the game so I actually have to tone down the settings some to low which is a little disappointing. I might be able to get a little better performance if I overclock the ATI 5650 to say 550 megahertz. But something to keep in mind for you StarCraft fans out there, StarCraft 2 fans. So yeah, I don't. Everything runs smoothly. All the games that I showed you run smoothly at just about high settings. Hopefully, all we discussed in this video. Uh, helped you out, and uh, especially those making the decision between the MacBook Pro 13 and the MV14. Thank you again for watching. Please feel free to make a comment, uh, subscribe, make any requests. All right, thanks again. Easy Tech Review out.